Welcome to Math 133, College Algebra for Business. Today I'm going to discuss a little bit how to complete the square. Actually, I'm going to give you a different method for doing so, and it's a method that I think helps you to remember what your goal is as you're moving through the process and makes it easier to perform. Let's get started. So here are two quadratic equations that will not factor. You cannot solve these by factoring. So let's go through the steps now of completing the square. And we'll see how the steps differ only slightly for these two equations. Our first step is to ask, is the leading coefficient 1? The leading coefficient means the coefficient of the first term, the squared term for these problems. Here, the leading coefficient is 1. It's understood to be 1 if it's not there. And in our other problem, the leading coefficient is 3. So we have two different answers here. We have yes, the leading coefficient is 1, and no, the leading coefficient is not 1. So we have to do a different step for the second problem than we do for the first. What we have to do for the second problem is to use the rules of algebra to make that leading coefficient equal to 1. What we're going to do here is we're going to divide both sides by the leading coefficient that is there right now. And when we do that, that's going to be the same thing as dividing each of those terms, the 3x squared, the 7x, the minus 2, and the 0, by 3. So our first term will become x squared. Our second term will become 7 over 3, or 7 thirds x, x. And then we'll have minus 2 thirds equals, well, 0 divided by 3 is 0. And now we do have a leading coefficient of 1. We just usually don't write it, like we usually don't write it over here. For now, let's move this second case out of the way. All right, so moving back to the first case here. Actually, we don't usually uh, write this 1 in there, so let's just remove that right now. Now we will move the constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. That gives me x squared plus 7x equals negative 1. Now this is completing the square, right? So I'm going to draw in a square here. It's going to be some term, and it's going to be squared. But I have to do unto one side as I do unto the other. I have to follow the golden rule of algebra. So if I add a square to the first side, to the left side, I have to do it to the right side as well. Now what's going to go into that square? That's the question. Now I will divide the coefficient of the second term, which is here, the second term, our x term, divided by 2. 7 divided by 2. And that goes in both of those squares because that is what I'm going to square. So again, what I am doing is dividing the coefficient of the second term by 2, and then I'm going to square it, adding it to both sides. Now this looks like it's getting really complicated, but by writing it this way in those boxes, it will make the last steps of this process easier. So now that I have divided the coefficient of the second term by 2, I'm going to square it. So 7 over 2 squared will give me 49 fourths as my final term. I still have my 7x. I still have my x squared, and on the opposite side, I have negative 1 plus 49 fourths. Okay, let me deal with the right side over there real quick, just to show you how I do it. I would convert the negative 1 to negative 4 over 4, because that's what's equal to 1, negative 1 that is, and then I add that to my 49 fourths, so I'm going to get 45 fourths. That's what I will have on my right-hand side, 
45 fourths. Now I have to figure out what the left hand side is equal to. I have a quadratic and in fact it is a perfect square trinomial because I forced it to be by taking half of the second term and squaring it I have set up a perfect square trinomial and that will factor and that's a good thing because that is our next step the perfect square trinomial factors into a binomial squared and that binomial is the square root of the first term the sine of the middle term and the square root of the last term but how did I take the square root of that last term so quickly in my head? Well, I did that because that term is already written up here inside the square that I drew. So now I have factored my perfect square trinomial, and I will take the square root of both sides. Remembering as I do this that I'm going to have to consider both the positive and the negative square root because I am choosing to take this square root as part of my solution process. The square root of any term squared is just that term, or in that case, this binomial. And our square root of 45 over 4, if you remember the rules by which we worked with radicals, you will see that that comes out to 3 square root of 5 over 2. And we must remember, though, let me make a little room for it, we have to consider both the positive and the negative cases. So now I'm going to have to move everything up a little bit, give myself a little more room. I am solving for x, so I want to move everything that is not x to the other side. I'm going to subtract 7 over 2 from both sides. That leaves me x equals negative 7 halves that I just moved over there, plus or minus 3 square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so that means I have two cases now that I have to consider. I have to consider, give me more room, what happens when I add that second term or when I subtract it. And ta-da, we're done. Except for the fact that often we prefer to have our answers written as a single fraction. So negative 7 plus 3 square root of 5 over 2 would be our answer written as a single fraction for that part. And I dropped something here. Look at that. Be careful. I dropped the negative when I recopied down here. <clears throat> do not do that. Okay, so watch for sign errors like that. They are really easy to make. But there are our two answers for that problem. I don't know about you, but I would never have gotten those answers by factoring. That's one of the reasons why completing the square is so important. It's also important as you move on to business calculus because you will use this technique in many different ways in calculus. But wait, we started with two problems. Let's take a look at the second problem. Now remember, when we first started, we asked ourselves, is the leading coefficient equal to 1? And our first answer was yes. So we jumped right into moving the constant to the other side. But we already noted that for our second problem, we have to divide both sides of the equation by the leading coefficient of the first term. Because when we divide that 3 by 3, we get our coefficient of 1. And actually, at that point, we are moving right into the same thing we've been doing already. So let's just take this, this form of our original equation, and we'll get rid of the rest of that, get it out of the way, because I was running out of room before. Let's not, try not to do that again. But we'll just move this one whoops, up here. Let's get rid of that little squiggle. And let's move on through our process. It's going to be just a little bit trickier right now, but we took care of the leading coefficient. It is 1. So what we need to do now is to move the constant to the other side. Okay, so our constant in this case is a fraction. That means to move the negative 2 to the other side, I have to add a positive 2 thirds. 
negative two-thirds plus positive two-thirds gives me a zero there on that side. So I have x squared plus seven-thirds plus nothing, zero. On the other side, I have positive two-thirds. Now, I do have seven-thirds x. Do not drop the x when you move down here. And then I'm going to follow my same process. I'm going to go ahead and draw in a box because I'm going to add a squared term. Okay, and how do I find that squared term? Well, according to my step number three, divide the coefficient of the second term by two and square it. What is the coefficient of the second term? Well, it is seven thirds. So I'm going to take seven thirds and I'm going to divide it by two. Well, I have a fraction there. So what I'm going to actually do, dividing when you're dividing fractions, is the same thing as multiplying, so I'll put a dot there for multiplication, by the reciprocal of the divisor. So instead of dividing by two, I'm multiplying by one half and I get the same thing. I multiply, I multiply straight across. So seven sixth is half of the coefficient of my middle term, or the coefficient of x. But I do have to square that, which is what that box indicates. So squaring that, I get a positive 49 over 36. So 2 thirds plus 49 over 36. Okay, on the left there in blue, you can see that I have already added my two fractions. That will give me 73 over 36. And now I just have to factor the right-hand side, which will factor into a binomial squared because I set it up that way. The square root of the first term, the sine of the middle term, and the square root of the last term in that trinomial. And that square root, of course, is found inside the box that I wrote or drew earlier. Okay, so now I just need to take the square root of both sides. Okay, any number, any term, any binomial that is squared, if you take the square root of that, you get whatever was under that radicand. Excuse me, the radical sign. Whatever was under the radical sign. Okay, and then I have to consider the positive and the negative cases for the square root of 73 over 36. Square root of 73, I can't do anything with. I have to leave it as the square root of 73, but in the denominator, Square root of 36 is 6, so I can write it that way. Now I need to isolate my x. I'm going to subtract 7 6 from both sides. That leaves me with just x plus 0, or x on the left-hand side. I then have negative 7 6 plus or minus the square root of 73 over 6. So I have the two cases. I have x equals negative 7 6 plus square root of 73 over 6, and I have x equals negative 7 6, still negative there, and a negative as my other option for my second term, square root of 73 over 6. If you need to put those as a single fraction, you could do it this way. There are a few other things that could be done with those negative signs, still following the rules of algebra and arithmetic. So I suggest you try this method on some of the problems you have done in the, inside the Hawks system. Ask any questions that you have, and I will see you in class.